So I'm uh, Rodolphe Durand, professor at HEC Paris and uh, academic director of the Society and Organization Research Center. And this is Benedict Febt Avigno, uh, executive director of the same research center. So we are very, very happy and glad to uh, welcome you all for this uh, special uh, event. Um, Hervé Le Trot is uh, joining us is, uh, in the uh, T building somewhere next to room 42, I've been told. So he will be with us in, in two minutes. So just let me um, introduce very briefly the, the event. It's a unique opportunity and a unique occasion. It's the first time ever that at uh, HEC uh, Jouir Josas, HEC Paris, I should say, on the campus of Jouir Josas, uh, professors, students, alumni, uh, entrepreneurs, all congregate in one big event on a specific theme, two degree challenge, climate is our business. Uh, this has never been done before, that all the different forces of HEC really uh, convene together to deal with, with these topics, taking many different angles. So Hervé Le Treux is uh, just uh, uh, arriving. So it's, a, it's really a special occasion. And today, you know, October 1st is also the deadline for many countries to uh, state their engagement for the reduction of, uh, actually, for this two degree challenge. So I think that we said that 80% of the countries so far, uh, the countries representing 80% of the CO2 emissions have made their statement so far. They have until tonight or maybe a bit later for some countries to really uh, achieve this, this goal. And we will see during the COP21 what will really happen. So without further ado, I let the floor to Benedict. We will introduce Hervé Le Troy that I thank very much for attending this and presenting to us uh, the state of the world on the climatic challenges that we are facing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rodolphe. Hi, everybody. So I, I, I would like just to add that uh, this uh, event also has been officially labelized uh, COP21 event. And uh, well, the idea now is to start with a scientific uh, point of view before leaving the floor to uh, professionals, experts, uh, business uh, leaders uh, on the uh, topic of, of, of climate. And uh, we are very happy to, to welcome Hervé Le Treux. Thank you very much, Hervé. Uh, you are a famous climatologist, uh, internationally recognized uh, for your works in the IPCC. Uh, network and uh, you teach also in very different uh, schools like Polytechnique, Ecole Normale Supérieure and uh, we are very uh, keen to hear about uh, uh, the experts point of view about climate, what are the real evolutions, what are the real challenges to, we all face today. Thank you very much, Hervé. Okay, so thank you for this uh, nice invitation. What I will do is uh, try to show that the climate problem is a problem that has been uh, with us already for a few decades, but that's a new problem because it's evolving quickly and that uh, what is at stake right now is, is really becoming urgent and much more urgent than it was when I began to study that uh, more than 30 years ago now. So, uh, well, <laughs> well, this is me, yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, I am in fact uh, just to uh, professor at the Paris uh, uh, Pierre and Marie Curie University, I'm also professor at Ecole Polytechnique, and I'm uh, the director of uh, an institute which is called Institut Pierre Simon Laplace which is a, a, a federation of nine laboratories in the Paris area. 
And maybe it's a good occasion to introduce what is a climate system because our institute has been organized a bit along this system. Uh, what you see here is that uh, the climate system is made of uh, different components. These components are multiple. They are um, very different. The atmosphere, for example, is a very quick fluid. In, in a matter of weeks, it is mixed at the surface of the Earth. It's also very unpredictable. We are not able to make uh, quantitative predictions beyond 10 days concerning the, the exact behavior of the atmosphere. The ocean is completely different. It's a, it contains maybe 100 more times in terms of mass of energy, of anything, and carbon, but it goes also 100 times slower. It's a, there is a, also there are also components which are so solid components which don't move the continents, but they move a little, still slowly, glaciers. And all that is being uh, put into um, uh, motion by, by exchanges, exchanges of uh, uh, energy, of motion. The, the, the ocean is put in motion by the atmosphere, uh, of uh, water, of carbon, of uh, many uh, chemical pollutants. All, all those interactions also go through uh, the, what we call the biosphere, which is life, which is last last component of the climate system, the one that we should not forget about. So this is a complex interactive uh, system. And this complex interactive system creates also problems which are at the scale of the planet. And when we speak about uh, climate uh, problems, what is at stake is something which is really at the scale of the Earth. And that's what makes really the difference between the, the other environmental problems, which are very often local problems, so uh, the polluters has to pay for what he has polluted. This is not really what can be done here. We are at the scale of the planet. We are all a built culprits and all also victims of what may happen. And the, uh, what is at stake is very different. So what I will try to do, well, to come back to our institute, uh, you know, research in, in natural sciences uh, was organized along the different uh, components of the climate system. So we had uh, laboratories dedicated to the atmosphere, to the ocean, to the physics of the atmosphere, to the biology uh, in the ocean, and so on. What we've tried to do at the scale of our institute is to have a capacity to observe, to model the system as a whole, and that brings together more than 1,000 persons in the Paris area, depending on from CNRS, CEA, from the different universities. And uh, I will try to show that uh, we've managed to, to model this system in a few minutes. Now, what I would like to insist on first are the scales at which this system may evolve in the future. Now, we all know that in the past, the climate of the Earth has been evolving, so climate will be defined as the statistics of this uh, uh, climate system over a few decades. Over a few, a, few, over a few decades, we have mean values for the temperature, risk of uh, floods, number of things that characterize the state of this uh, climate system over a few decades everywhere, everywhere on the Earth. So climate may evolve, and over the, the very long life of the Earth, which is uh, 4 billion years and a half, it has experienced many, many different uh, aspects. Now, what we are going to look at is a very small period, but that's a period which is very important for us. It's the one during which our civil human beings were there. And then, more specifically, the period between, uh, during which civilizations developed. So let's look at uh, this uh, period. And what you say that what we have experienced as civilized uh, during the development of our civilizations was something which is extremely remarkable. You have here a number of uh, greenhouse gases. We'll take them now for as indices of uh, the, the climate state. We know that when climate changes, 
the greenhouse gases also change, and I, I will dwell a little on that later. Uh, so what you see here is that for 10,000 years, this axis is 10,000 years. Why 10,000 years? Because over 10,000 years, we've been in a warmer uh, period, uh, which uh, was uh, happening after the last glaciation. Last glaciation uh, was uh, 20,000 years ago, so there were already human beings, and even Homo sapiens sapiens was there at the time of the last glaciation, but there were very few of them. And uh, now, for the, the last 10,000 years, we had a very stable climate, at least globally. At least globally, there was one big accident during this period, the Sahara, which was green, uh, became dry, and we know that. Why? It's because of uh, astronomical properties of the rotation of the Earth, which have changed uh, uh, 5,000 years ago. But apart from that, the stable was extremely stable, and what you see is something which is very abrupt. This is the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. It has been kept as very stable uh, ratio of 2,070 parts per million in volume for 10,000 years ago, and it went up in a matter of decades to 400,000. So I will show that th this is something which is extremely important for the, uh, the climate system, but l let me emphasize first the, the character extremely abrupt of this uh, variation. And one way to look at it is to look uh, in, uh, at what is causing that. What is causing that are emissions, and the, the most important emissions are due to the use of fossil fuels. Uh, I think, uh, the, the very, very large majority of, uh, of CO2 which is emitted, uh, large component of CO2 which is emitted, is due to the use of uh, fossil fuels. You have a little more, you have uh, deforestation, uh, you have also uh, the cement production, but generally uh, CO2 comes from the use of uh, carbon, uh, of uh, petrol, of oil, of gas. So what you see is uh, our, 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 our figures, which are from the International Energy Agency, which are built on the trade of those products. And uh, you see that the increase is, in fact, very recent. The increase in terms of emission, and these are yearly emission, it's not, it's not uh, an aggregated value, it's a yearly emission of CO2. The increase began really in the 50s. Uh, this explains why this problem of climate change is in fact a new problem. And uh, you know, there, there have been several Earth Summit. First of this Earth Summit was in 72 in Stockholm. And there was almost no mention of the climate problem there. Why that? Because in the 70s, we were already at the infancy of the problem. At that time, we were still beyond the limit of what we think was the, 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 the limit or the threshold that we should not have uh, 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 gone over, and uh, this uh, limit was uh, maybe three billions of tons per year. Here, and it, it was it was really in the 70s that uh, people went that uh, our emissions went over it, and uh, this limit uh, not only uh, marked the time when uh, CO2 began to accumulate in the atmosphere. So CO2 has this uh, property, which is extremely important, that uh, when it goes into the atmosphere, there is a part that goes back to the ocean and, and, the, and uh, the vegetation over the continents uh, very quickly, maybe uh, one half. And there is the other half, which stays in the atmosphere. Well, uh, very, uh, we say a century. After a century, half of it is still there in, in mass. So. CO2 accumulates, and during this period, it began to accumulate in the atmosphere, and it accumulates irreversibly. So in all those periods, there began to be a questioning, which was, well, CO2 is piling up in the atmosphere, can it be dangerous? And at that time, we were only cap able to uh, rely on models of the climate system, 
on predictions of what could happen, and I, I will speak about those models later on. Uh, we began to see the first sign of uh, something occurring, which uh, afterwards uh, managed to uh, verify the prediction of the models. Later on, in, in, in the early 90s, so very late, very late, in the early 90s, we were able to, to detect the first changes of uh, the climate system. Why is that? It's because we have a delay in the climate system. The delay is due to the ocean. The ocean takes a while to heat up, and that's like when you put the, 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 the fire under a, a pan of water, well, it takes a while to, to, to heat up. The oceans take a few decades to heat up. So we are in, a, uh, in, in, in facing a problem that really appeared, appeared less than 20 years ago. We are in a situation where we are facing something completely new, completely new, and there is a, a, a reaction in the public opinion which is a, a bit different because, well, in a way that's already uh, 30, 40 years that people speak about climate change. And as you have to simplify the message to, to go through the media, the message looks, uh, sounds a bit the same. Well, a bit the same ideas, the same uh, messages. But the situation is quite different. You imagine that the emissions were, uh, well, there was an intention to curve them down at, at this stage, were six to seven billion uh, of tons per year. And they continued to, when, to go up. There are now 10 billion of tons per year. Well, I imagine that we were uh, going at a certain rate towards some difficulties, towards some problems in, in, the, in the Earth system. We, we are moving towards the same difficulties uh, five to ten times uh, to times some quicker. And as I'm going to, to mention again later on, we, we are now facing limits at the rate uh, we, you know, I will re-emphasize this uh, two-degree target for climate change that we shouldn't go over. And uh, at, uh, at the rate where we emit now uh, greenhouse gases, we have 20 years of emissions which are compatible with this target. So things have changed a lot because we have, in a in very little time, been able to, to, to go beyond the, the, the thresholds, beyond the limits, that we shouldn't have, uh, have passed. Now, one thing I would like to, to add is that I have spoken, I've spoken about CO2. CO2 is not the only greenhouse gas. So this diagram is part of the summary for policymakers of the uh, IPCC, of the last report, uh, report of uh, uh, 2013, two years ago. And uh, it's supposed to be a basic diagram for, for policymakers. It's something which is quite complex. You have the whole list of what you emit and may affect the climate of the Earth. It's not only CO2, you have a lot of, uh, a, 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 a lot of uh, gases, a lot of particles, uh, a lot of gauntlets, so, uh, uh, droplets that may uh, be in the atmosphere and may affect climate. When you want to alert about climate change, well, you, you can just alert about CO2. This is the most important, and it defines the fact that we, we are uh, facing a, a huge problem. When you want to act, well, you have to deal with the complexity. One of the, and that's a message I will try to insist on, one of the big problems we are stuck in right now is this one. In terms of alert, I think the alert is going through. We all know that there is a problem. I try to re-emphasize it. If we want to go from the alert to the solution, we have to deal with the complexity of the system. You cannot make a situation where you, 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 you deal with, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, restriction laws or, 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 or quotas or restriction of emissions without having a, a metrics to compare all those actions. And uh, so we are in a situation where, where the complexity is becoming a, a, a huge uh, problem uh, in, in dealing with this problem, with uh, this issue. Now let's go a bit further and try to see what is before us. Uh, problem of uh, CO2 is not only a problem that we see, it's a problem that we've tried to forecast, a problem which was there 
since the 70s is, well, we emit CO2 in the atmosphere, other gases, is it dangerous? That's the way it was uh, uh, asked about by the, the scientist. Uh, let's, let's see whether this is dangerous. And to know whether this is dangerous, we needed some kind of models. The models had been developed a bit independently, mostly uh, like uh, everything scientists generally do uh, through a spirit of curiosity. And the curiosity was, can we try to make a replica of the real Earth using the laws of physics? Again, this is something that is not very well understood. What we do uh, when we try to model the Earth is, is really try to create some living Earth. And what makes this uh, Earth live is are the equations. The equations, I always put one equation, never try to, to get into it. <laughs> but uh, just to remind people that what we do relies on physical principles. A question that is uh, almost always there when we deal about model, what kind of data do you take into account? We don't really work this way. We try to build a replica of the climate of the, of the Earth. Well, it's a planet that will have its own life. And uh, this planet, we will uh, use it uh, as, a, uh, as a, um, a tool to make a crash test, in, in, in a sense, where we increase CO2, may also change the vegetation, maybe different things, and see what happens. This is a huge work, and it has taken a lot of time. This is uh, for the IPSL, our institute, the kind of uh, 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 scheme that defines the subcomponents of our climate model. It's in French, I'm sorry, there's a few transparencies that I was obliged to let in French. Uh, you, you, you have a, t a team that looks at the atmosphere, a team that looks at uh, uh, the continental surfaces with a lot of emphasis on vegetation, a team that looks at the chemistry of the atmosphere, another one at the ocean, another one at sea ice, another one at biochemistry in the ocean. In total, a model is a work of about 100 persons for 10 to, to, 10 to 20 years. It, it's, it's a huge object in terms of science, and uh, it needs uh, verification at all stages. It needs also understanding at all stages. And this is a work that is mostly done uh, in uh, international cooperation. So let me skip that for a while. Uh, what, the way we work is we, we have exercises, common exercises, about 20 institutes in the world that have models like ours. And uh, we do common exercise. This was the last common exercise which was organized uh, six, seven years ago for the preparation of the last uh, IPCC report. And what you see is uh, all the models, well, we we'll keep the same formulation and then we do experiments where we try to simulate past climates, uh, recent past, uh, past uh, at the scale of uh, the, glaci the glacial eras when, uh, from which I already uh, spoke, and sensitivity tests, carbon cycle tests, um, uh, and well, when you have tested your model uh, competitively, I mean, it's a competition between institutes, we, we can try to use this to make future projections. So, cannot insist, but it's a huge uh, uh, work. And very often in the kind of discussions people have had about this, it was a bit uh, frightening even. We say, people saying, well, do you know there is a water vapor is also a, a, a greenhouse gas? Yes, of course, um, maybe uh, thousands of people that work on these systems, that model it, that compare it to data. We have not uh, uh, forgotten water vapor. Yes, not. <laughs> uh, so, so there have been debates which were really out of scope about this. But still, we, we have problems. We are not saying that this is a complete replica of the climate system. We have difficult parts. Clouds are difficult to model. And so this is, uh, these are planets that look like the real planet, but are not the real planets. Let, let me go uh, to the main results that uh, probably have steered the, the, the uh, the need for, for uh, uh, policies in this. It's precisely uh, exercise where, uh, exercises where people have been looking at future without uh, policies uh, organized through uh, international, international negotiations. We let the system go the way it is, and the way it is, it is a, 
evolving with climate drivers. Climate drivers are demography, they are also the kind of changes we may expect in uh, technologies, the kind of uh, feeling people may have uh, to uh, uh, environmental uh, issues and constraints, but uh, the, 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 the kind of uh, um, uh, distribution between local and global issues in, in the economies. Well, all that may be part of, uh, may, may explain different uh, scenarios and different emissions for the future. So the, the IPCC, the, the GIEC in French, or, or organized itself. It's, it's, uh, the IPCC is, is, is a, an expert system. It's an expert system that draws uh, voluntary uh, uh, work from the from different scientists. People are not paid to participate to, to IPCC, and this is something which is done on a leisure time, if you want. And uh, the work there is try to establish some mapping, some assessment of uh, of science. Of course, it works also the other the other way around. The, the IPCC sends back a number of questions, and the questions were. If we let, if we look at those scenarios, uh, which were those scenarios developed by agency like the International Ag uh, uh, Energy Agency I mentioned, or other universities, what will be the change in temperature at the end of the century if we do nothing, or nothing more than what we would do if we didn't care really about the problem? So what you have here are scenarios which are marker scenarios. The B1 scenario is the most optimistic one. It's a scenario where the emissions of CO2 uh, peak uh, to 10 billion years, to, to 10 billion per year in, uh, uh, the, in the middle of the century, in 2050. I said that we've already passed this mark. So this green scenario, which is the most optimistic, is a scenario which is already uh, dated, and uh, we, we've gone over it. And uh, what you see is that for one given scenario, we have a range, so that's a scenario of emissions, and this is translated in temperature, and the translation in temperature uh, is accompanied by, by, by a range of temperatures. This is the uncertainty, physical uncertainty, about the models, mostly because we don't understand everything about clouds. Uh, but if we add more CO2 to the atmosphere, uh, instead of having temperatures that may increase from a bit less than two to more than three, we, we go from four to six, maybe. Uh, and that's a scenario which is called FI, fossil intensive, if we let really the emissions go. So these results have shown very early that if we set up this limit of two degrees, well, it has been a bit displaced, I'm sorry, here, yeah, just a problem with the transparency, but it's just above. This limit of two degrees, uh, well, there is no scenario uh, in a policy free mode where you can really uh, uh, stay with it. We are requiring that uh, we would not go over two degrees which, and that we would stabilize under those two degrees. You see that all the scenarios there are scenarios where temperature is still evolving at the end of the century and increasing at the end of the century. So there has been a uh, a motion in the, in the climate community to say, okay, we, we, we need to work it otherwise. We have to set objectives and see how those objectives could be met. So the way the, the community worked was a bit uh, uh, in the working uh, uh, from the objective and coming back to uh, what is needed to, to, to meet them. And uh, so the objective is to have a, a temperature. You see here the, the, the Earth's observed temperature, which is increasing now for, uh, been increasing for a few decades. Uh, we would like to stabilize that two degrees above this pre-industrial value, which are there. And this represents uh, the, the two degree uh, scenario that people uh, are, are, are expecting we, 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 can, we, we can match. Now, if we want to, to reach that, we, we can also say the kind of CO2 concentration, the amount of CO2 that can stay in the atmosphere, and it has to be also slightly reduced. Well, uh, it has to get some equilibrium and even be slightly reduced. This is from our model. And uh, if you do that, 
I say that we, we, we have a limit in, what, in the amount of CO2 we put into the atmosphere. We say basically here that we should not increase it. So we have to decrease what we put in the atmosphere in a very drastic way. And very drastic means 40 to 70% in 2050, which is huge. You have to think about all the, the cars. We have one billion and a half cars which are running, uh, which are uh, in, 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 in function uh, in, in, in our Earth. This is something huge. And we have to reach, even at the end of uh, the century, something like uh, uh, negative emissions, which means we, we, we would be able, we should be able to, to, to take back from the atmosphere what we put in it. And because if we want to have equilibrium, we should not put anything more in the atmosphere and even be able to, 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 to diminish a little what we have put before. So this is something which builds, which helps build the uh, what we call very fun, the roads to the two degrees. The roads to the two degrees consist, well, we have some certainties, I've shown that all the models were not equal, diminishing from 40 to 70% in 2050 and getting to negative emissions, being able to, to provide negative emissions at the end of the century. This is something huge. And what we know is that we, we cannot wait. And I think uh, I'll insist on that. The factor of uh, uh, time is essential uh, at, at the rate, uh, uh, I already said, at the rate when, uh, uh, with which we emit CO2 now, we have 20 years before it will be impossible uh, to, to go over this uh, uh, two degree target, which is not a, a security target. I mean, we will have climate changes before we reach uh, two degree, but this is, uh, we have already some signs that climate is changing. But it's uh, the neighbor of danger at which people have uh, managed to uh, uh, agree. Now, I will skip that because I, I see that time is going quickly. But uh, we, we have many uh, ways to verify models. And, uh, but, uh, so I, but now, let, let's look at one thing which is important. It's, uh, it, during the last years, people have begun to ask well, whether this was uh, manageable, whether there, there, there could be a success in, in, uh, in, in meeting these two degree targets. And the question that goes with it, what, what would be the, the planet, what would be the risk, what would be the changes if we didn't manage? And this is something we are able to investigate a bit better now. Uh, you have here the, the kind of maps of uh, the temperature changes. Uh, well, in Below, well, this is complicated, an intricate uh, way to to organize the, the scenarios. I won't describe that. RCP 2.6 is a scenario of emission, a reference scenario of emissions that more or less project us to a future of two degree warming. And you see that the warming is larger over the poles, larger over the continents. Uh, uh, when there's a poles, it's less obvious for Antarctica in this case. This is increased and much increased if we let the system go uh, to four or five degrees. You see that there are regions that will, uh, where the, the increase is in fact much more, and the, the continental areas in particular. Now, how can we trust the model? There are, there are two things I'd like to emphasize. One is, uh, three maybe. One is we, we don't predict only the surface temperature. We, we predict also that the temperature in the higher level of the atmosphere should uh, uh, cool, uh, on the contrary, and that's something we already begin to, to see. Uh, we, we have references in the past that, may, well, that we may use. We take the same model. Uh, the model is one million uh, instructions, one million of uh, equations, if you want. And we, we take it just the same. We change uh, the position of the, so, of the sun, uh, different parameters, and try to replicate the difference between the glacial era and the pre-industrial climate, and we get this map, which is very similar to that, even in, in orders of magnitude. And we know that this is more or less real because we have data from the past, which we can analyze, essentially from FUNAS, and uh, they, they match well the model results. We have also something which is new, which is quite new now, uh, but to, which is existing. For 15 years, maybe now, we, have, we are seeing 
the, the first signs of climate change. And the first signs of climate change are also organized uh, in, in, in the same way as what we have predicted before. We had predicted, as I mentioned, from models, uh, warming larger on the continents, larger on the poles, uh, with uh, more uh, amplification larger in the north and in the south. And this is what is occurring right now. This is uh, the, the, the last uh, 15 years compared to the 30 years after World War II. And this signal is extremely clear. And when people ask whether there is a, a chance that this happens, that's because this coincidence between the predictions which were made before and what we see could be the result of hazard, well, we can test that with mathematics and the result is about five person chance that it would be hazard. So we are facing something which is undoubtedly now linked with climate change. So there are a number of things that we can uh, uh, predict as a result of this. First, one should refrain from thinking that what we see already when we look through the window is climate change. Uh, we, we are there. We are uh, just there. We see this. We began to have some, some, some way uh, of evolving which is differentiating itself from the, the, the natural uh, uh, oscillations, but the, it, it, we are at the beginning of uh, what we fear is this, of course, and we, we fear something that will bring us there. But we are, we are not seeing the, 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 the real climate change. A lot of uh, uh, misconception about that. I, I don't want to, to insist too much, but people say, well, climate change is, is already there. No, signs, symptoms of climate change are already there, and some effects that do affect people are there also. But this is not what we fear in the, in the future. And, um, well, there are a number of things that we know will happen. Sea level rise, I will not insist, but we, we are at a rate of uh, 35 centimeters per century, probably go over that. We, we expect a raise of sea level of 50 uh, centimeters to one meter, and this will be a, a, a huge problem for all deltas, river del uh, deltas, and for when you think about the gouge of the Nil, the, well, the, these uh, re, re areas will be salinized, will be submerged in some times. We have also a decrease in uh, Arctic sea ice, for example, which is, uh, and this year, this is uh, two years already, but this year was also a record uh, melting. So this is a perennial ice, the one that stays in winter. It's diminishing all the time. It's been diminished by, by factor two almost in the last decades. We are seeing also many uh, proofs of climate change when we look at the living world. The living world is uh, uh, facing two, two issues. Well, when you think about vegetation, the net primary production of vegetation depends very much on the climate. And if we uh, uh, see an increase in temperature, we'll probably uh, affect negatively the, 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 the food production uh, and the, the vegetation production in the south, uh, in south, and I mean by that tropical region, and we will maybe favor it in our regions. So very different uh, uh, way to affect, but very effective way to affect uh, the, um, the vegetation. So a number of changes which we see which you can, uh, and for animals, animals have to move. If they are in regions where they are not adapted, they have one solution, they have to move. They cannot put a jacket, they have to move. If they don't feel the right temperature, they have to move. Now, this is one thing. The other thing is we cannot predict everything. And as I'm late, I, I will not uh, spend uh, too much time on this. I'm a bit slower when I, I speak English. Uh, I, uh, I will... Um, try to, 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 to let you understand that. We, we know more or less what are the regions at risk of changes, of having floods, of having uh, 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 droughts, and, uh, but we, we don't know exactly where, when, at which, uh, at which, with which amplitude, because uh, the nature of the atmosphere is to be a bit chaotic. The atmosphere is in fact oscillating in a permanent way between different states. Climate change will change this, 
but in a way we, we have difficulties to, to, to predict. So we will have to adapt, uh, well we have to face climate change, which are partly predictable, but also partly unpredictable. And this is something extremely important when we want to to, to, to try to envisage uh, the future of, the, uh, of our planet. So let me skip that. What are the issues at stake if we want to adapt to climate change? Well, many, I imagine that we are not able to do it uh, to, to stabilize climate. Uh, what, uh, what are the issues at stake? I, I'd like to, to show it in, in, with a few examples. First examples are taken from the, the world of uh, intertropical countries. Intertropical countries are really uh, countries which by definition, by, by climate engineering, if you want, of the planet, are more vulnerable than the uh, extratropical climates uh, cl countries li uh, like ours. Why that? In uh, in the intertropical region, in most cases, you have one rain season. And uh, if it's not there one year or two years or three years, then it's a huge problem, it's a vital problem. So climate change is vital in those areas. It's less vital in our area, but it's still bringing problems. I will try to refer to them just afterwards. So yes, yeah, there are some statistics by the Food and Alimentation Organization uh, where they compare uh, what will be needed by 2050 compared to present. In Africa, due to demography, due to uh, uh, existing uh, bad alimentation and so on, the, what, is re what will be required was to, would be to uh, increase the food requirements by, by, by a factor of five. In Asia, it's two. In other countries, it's a bit less in other parts of the world. But uh, it's, it's a huge amount. And uh, this is something that will, um, will be uh, uh, affected negatively by climate change. So when we speak about climate adaptation, we, we, we have to understand that this will be happening in a context which will be difficult for all other reasons. And there have been a lot of thinking about that. And generally, I want to uh, address that in a few words, but. Uh, uh, th there is a, a, a full recognition now that climate change is one, again, uh, among many environmental and social and political problems, and that we have to consider that as a whole. Climate change should not be forgotten. There are people that, join, that so often take climate as, a, as an excuse for uh, policies that are... Uh, forgetting completely about the, 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 the real natural problem. Well, we should not, but we should reversely not uh, try to, to resolve the, the, the natural problem of climate change without saying that it is uh, intimately linked with the problem of uh, managing biodiversity and, and preserving biodiversity on the Earth, and that we will not be able to do it without looking at uh, the different social stressors, political stressors, cannot impose from the science, quotas of uh, CO2, uh, without looking at uh, uh, the, the system. And the, in th this is a diagram which was from the group two of uh, IPCC. Group two was a group that was assessing this interface between uh, uh, science and uh, social sciences, art sciences and social sciences. And the conclusion that what we need is something that would be constantly reevaluated. We are facing a problem which is difficult, which is mixing different issues, which is also uh, uh, um, dependent on a number of uh, uncertainties, physical uncertainties, social uncertainties, political uncertainties. So we have to revise uh, our options permanently and try to manage that in a way that we, we, we may uh, be on the good trajectory. And uh, Okay, so this was a, a, another thing to show that adaptation has some limits and that uh, so the, the, the speed at which species can uh, move on the Earth, if its uh, speed is, is, is slower than the, the motion of the, the isotherms on the Earth, then, then they are at risk. And that's the case in many cases now. So just seeing that, um, since the last thing I wanted to say about these uh, consequences, those consequences clearly, well, are consequences we, we may adapt to and consequences we may not. And uh, 
Okay. And this is particularly true in, 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 uh, in, in the intertropical region where, where the, the, the vulnerabilities, where the consequences are a bit uh, harder, but also in the polar regions, which are vulnerable uh, areas, but also in urban areas, but also in a number of complex uh, areas. So I'll skip again one transparency. I had an example about China, but I, I, I will uh, leave that. I wanted just to finish by a few words uh, and, and leave the, the, the floor to questions. But a few words about the uh, work I, I did, and in a sense I, co I, I coordinated it, concerning the, my region of the southwest of France. And I was uh, uh, always uh, recalling that I'm from originally from Bordeaux, and that. Uh, and I was asked by the president of the Aquitaine region to to, to make. A, uh, uh, to coordinate a work on climate changes and their consequences about the southwest of France. And I, I don't want to, to explain that in detail, there have been 300 pages, but just to mention that this is an area, of course, where the problems are not as vital as the one in Africa. But we, it's a, a, a region where the, the, the life, the social life is complex, and this complexity is a, is a matter of vulnerability. And the uh, uh, first thing that uh, surprised us, we tried to did, do an assessment the way the, the, the IPCC does it. So went to all public laboratories that had something to say about uh, vineyards, about mountains, about the ocean, about the, 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 the fishing industry. About, and we found more than 100 groups and people that were uh, re really uh, and, and uh, head of groups, head of laboratories, were willing to contribute. And I was amazed by the amount of actual, factual information which is in laboratories and that people no long, never care to, to ask for. We, are, we have been discussing about these climate issues as if it was some abstract problem. But we have a lot of information to make it concrete and to make it uh, and to make it something we can really work uh, with in in a, in, in, in a way where we study the things, we study the problems, and, and we try to resolve them collectively. So, just two examples to to, to precise this idea. Uh, I will take two parameters which are important in Aquitaine, but also elsewhere. This one, the first one is warm spells. We know that in a climate that will be warmer, there will be also warm spells. And um, the, uh, these warm spells will create situations in uh, southwest of France, for example, where summers may be very often 10 degrees warmer than it is, than it is that in, sorry, than what it is now. And, uh, this is a situation that would be put Bordeaux, maybe uh, in Spain, southern Spain. So we try to look at research that would have emphasized the changes in urban planning that would occur. Uh, this is something you have to, to look at well in advance. And in a sense, you, you could do it because, as I said, diminishing the emissions is a complete urgency because the emissions we put in the atmosphere we will never be able to take them out of the atmosphere. Uh, so there is no way back. Uh, or we, we've not the technology so far to, to, to take them. I was speaking about negative emissions. We, we, we have not this technology so far. So we, there is a complete urgency there. And the, the other thing is uh, uh, that the, the, if, when you increase the greenhouse gases, reversely, the, the impact uh, on climate takes a while. And we could say that this uh, while, this uh, delay, may be the delay for democracy, for acting, for discussing, for making plans. And we, we shouldn't waste this time. And of course, uh, if, if uh, a city like that has to be very warm, one, one has to try to, to look already uh, at what one should do. And Bordeaux is, not, uh, is an example where a lot have, have been down. It's not uh, an, any city, uh, and uh, I think in no city in France have been uh, really complete uh, taking into account of what it may mean. Uh, I s another area, uh, another domain which I'd like to emphasize because it's a good example is the domain of uh, uh, 
the seashore. And uh, so littoral areas are vulnerable areas because they can be submerged, because they can be eroded, and erosion is more difficult to predict in submersion because it's tribute, uh, it, it depends on the, uh, on the whereabouts the, of the atmosphere. If we have a risk of submersion, and uh, we will have uh, a risk also uh, of, uh, well, we, 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 we need to know what we do. Do we ask the people to move away? Do we want to, to, are we going to tell them that we won't do anything? Can we already uh, uh, plan a number of uh, uh, infrastructures to protect them? Uh, so those questions are being asked in a lot of domains, and this is something even in our societies where we may think we are we are less uh, prone to to uh, adverse consequences from climate change. We we have to look out. Okay, so just to finish, two two words. I think, as I mentioned, we we need really to uh, to to diminish climate uh, uh, greenhouse gases emissions very quickly, and more so because we do not make the necessary efforts so far. I think to uh, uh, create uh, these negative emissions that uh, all scenarios take into account, or so at the same time that we we don't know whether it's something really possible. Uh, at the end of the century, if we are not, in, if we, if at the end of the century, we're not able to to have uh, uh, negative emissions. We, we we should do some efforts much larger right now. The other thing is that this, for many people, sounds very far away from their uh, reach, from their uh, daily life, and I think that caring about our own territory is something which is extremely useful in terms of. Uh, pedagogy of what is the complexity of the climate system. If you look at a given territory, you can mix those two issues of uh, emitting less, adapting to the, uh, the part of the climate change that is unavoidable, and also looking simultaneously at different issues linked with climate change, uh, biodiversity, social problems. So I think each territory is, a, is, is, a, is also a way to, to look at the complexity of the problem and is, I would say, a pedagogical tool to, to face the complexity of the problem. So I think we have, very often people say we, we need to uh, uh, think globally and act locally. I think we need to think globally, to think locally, and also to act uh, locally and globally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hervé. I think we have time for one or two questions. I'm sorry, not so much more. Uh, I had a very f uh, quick question, please, about the permafrost and Groenland, maybe, uh, because I, I remember you, you told about this uh, at the conference earlier, and it was uh, quite in interesting also to know what is happening in the Groenland, because, uh, and then uh, we have uh, one or two questions there. Well, I think in high latitudes, of course, we, we have a problem which is methane. Methane in the ground that could escape. Methane is very powerful greenhouse gas. Truth is we don't know very well so far. And uh, this, so this is a pending, uh, pending threat. Uh, when we look at uh, the last warm period preceding ours, there was no such uh, increase of uh, methane, but still it, there can be more in the next, uh, in next period. So, Yes, this is a threat that is difficult to measure, but there's a threat. There are many threats that we have difficulties to measure. So far, the choice of our community has been, of, uh, those natural scientists have been trying to emphasize things we were really uh, almost certain about, and not too much to raise fuzzy issues that uh, we don't really know, but that are effectively threats. If you modify a system you don't understand, you have a number of threats. Um, at the beginning of the presentation, um, you have said that all of us were both responsible and victims of climate change. Um, however, it seems like these responsibilities and these um, vulnerabilities are, ha there are various degrees of responsibility and vulnerability. And therefore, could you please comment on the topic of climate justice and is it right to say, maybe putting China apart, that most 
rich northern countries are very responsible but just little vulnerable to climate change, whereas most poor thousand, thousand countries are very vulnerable but just little responsible. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think this is globally completely true. I mean, and as I say, there are natural resources, reasons for that. I mean, the intertropical regions uh, face uh, harsher climate uh, uh, constraints, and I think, in by many respects, they're also often poor because of that. So there is a, a double uh, uh, double way to eat them. Then they're, they're, they're already suffering from natural climate, and then we, we change the climate in a way which is worse still, uh, and, and they will suffer twice from that. So. Uh, yes, I, I, I said that. Uh, I was also thinking uh, about uh, what is internal to our societies, and uh, probably what I tried to allude to when I say this, which is uh, globally true, there is a, a constant call for action from the governments that is, is necessary, of course, and I, I think COP21 will be a, an opportunity that cannot be missed. But still, this will not happen if there is also full conscience of the, of the societies. And I think right now, probably, the weaker, the weaker part of the problem are the, 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 the conscience of the societies and probably also the understanding of the complexities of the problem. So I think the problem of educating uh, people, uh, the society in those issues is extremely important. So if uh, climate justice is a huge problem. It's a, it's a necessary problem. I think it is a really uh, beyond all negotiations in, in COP21. But we, we have also a problem of uh, raising the awareness, raising the responsibility of everyone, because there is not a good uh, understanding of what is at stake. And that's why I mentioned also the, the local uh, studies and the local actions to, as, as a way to educate uh, people. One last question. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Hervé. Thank you very much uh, for your bright explanations. I am no expert, but I am one of the best generalists since I graduated from this school some 39 years ago. <laughs> now then, I feel I, am, I want to be a responsible citizen. I, will, I am not an expert, I will never become I'm an expert, but I have my duties and I would like to fulfill them. My rights are taken care of, uh, no worries, but my duties. And what as a normal citizen like me oh, would you recommend? Maybe uh, if not one, maybe three recommendations beyond normal life and normal uh, uh, duties as, as a normal citizen, and I, I do my share and I have my, my habits, uh, whatever, we don't, we don't want to go into detail. But I have an extra 40 years of stay on the surface of this earth. <laughs> Plus or minus, okay? P mal daumen, wie die Deutsche sagen, okay? What direction would you uh, recommend, me, uh, recommend me to take? Thank you. Well, I, I think it's a question that uh, is asked in many different forms uh, uh, by, by many people. But I think it really depends on, on, on uh, also on the characters and the possibilities and what is at reach of a certain person. I mentioned uh, at the end this issue of uh, local view of the, the climate because I, because of this question always asked to me, and this is also the reason why I, I've been working in Paris for almost 40 years, I was glad to come back to my, my country, and uh, I, I think a lot of can be done by, work and by working in, uh, uh, at the scales of municipalities, uh, at the scales of uh, uh, regions. I, I think it's very difficult to act alone for that, well, maybe people do manage to do it. I'm, I'm personally uh, difficulties with this kind of uh, uh, action alone and, and making it uh, really feel uh, uh, very... Uh, well, I have difficulties to, 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 to feel I'm doing something important when I'm working alone. But I think we, you, you, there are many opportunities to work that, uh, locally on these issues. And probably, because 
th there is no knob uh, at, in the hands of uh, head of states to, to diminish the CO2. You know, there's a knob at those. They, they would have to, 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 to turn it and they don't turn it. But no, or everything that states may decide in Copenhagen, in, uh, in uh, Paris, are measures that will be incentive. Uh, and these, these incentive uh, measures we will try to, to generate something at the scale of regions, let's say in municipalities. So I think where, where, where we have to work, I think. Thank you very much, Hervé.